In some countries, sport is like the national pastime. That's true. But in the Philippines, some might say that pageantry is the pastime. That's true. You know what? In the Philippines, we have pageants all over the places. Yes, we have pageants in the barangay, in school, national, local. That's why we really love Miss Universe. It's like it's giving pride and putting the Philippines back on the pedestal. That's why there's an added pressure as a candidate coming from a pageant-loving country. But it's a good pressure. I always look up to our former Miss Universe Philippines. They really did well in the competition. And now this is my time to show who I am, you know, to offer what Rabia can show to the rest of the universe. So I'm very happy. Um, and at the same time, I'm excited to make all my Kababayans proud. And hopefully I do. Why do you think it is that the Philippines love pageants? They have appreciation for me. We do love pageant because we, we used to think that um, we wanted to be included in, in the world, you know. Uh, I have to be honest, in the Philippines, my skin color used to be not the standard of beauty. I was obsessed whitening my skin because these are the kinds of beauty queen we see um, on the mainstream. But things were different now. That's why I'm very proud to be a morena in the Philippines. Um, we call it morena. It's brown skin girl. And to be able to represent, you know, my color, my identity as a true Filipina. Tell me about your journey to being crowned Miss Philippines. You know, in a world that, uh, in a country, I should say, that loves pageants. That must have been a very intense process. Tell me about, you know, your journey to being Miss Philippines. Well, my journey was crazy. You know what? I started to be a dark horse. Nobody noticed me. Nobody knows I was in the competition up until the preliminary and the coronation night. And when I won, I received different comments. Of course, there were people who didn't expect me to do well, who think that I cheated. That's why I, I need to redeem myself in Miss Universe. I really need to do well in this competition. And... The thing is, I, I love pressure. I love criticism. I get better every day with that. You tell me I cannot do that, I turn to you, and I, I'm going to say that, no, I can do it for myself. <laughs> so how does it feel then to be on the global how? stage? How do you feel to be here in this moment right now? It's crazy, but I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the support, not just from the Filipino community, but also from Thailand, um, Latin countries, who do appreciate me as a candidate, as a person. It, it motivates me that I am beautiful, I can offer so much in this world, and when somebody believes in you, it gives you that extra energy to really do well and perform well. Do you have a sense with the girls, all of the girls competing, you're competing, but is there a sense of camaraderie with all of the girls? Is there like a real spirit to, you know, sort of um, motivate each other to do better? You know what? I have a different idea about Miss Universe. I thought it's going to be very competitive in a healthy way. Well, of course. But now I can see every girl helping each other from fixing those hairs, from trying to zip up those outfits. It speaks of the closeness and the kind of camaraderie that we want to have. The goal of Miss Universe is not just to crown one girl, but also to build a genuine and long-lasting friendships among us. Would you say within the Miss Universe world, the contestants, is there a sisterhood? Are you sisters? There, there is sisterhood. I can say I was able to talk to different um, representatives from different backgrounds, different cultures, and despite our differences, there's so much to be highlighted in what um, binds us together. And, and that is because we want to empower women. We want to have our advocacies. We want to speak for the things that we love. And that's, that's a celebration of women and the beauty that we have. So coming out of this week, obviously you would love to be crowned Miss Universe. Of but, course. <laughs> and that, that would be wonderful, of course, for any of you. But what else will you take out of this week? What do you think you'll feel at the end of this week, regardless of the result? How will you be a different person? It's, it's the growth and the development that I was able to have during preparing for this dream. I will be honest, there was a moment that I lost my identity. 
because I was put under pressure. I was in that position in which I feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not a good representative of my country, but I was able to bounce back stronger. And if I was able to do that for Miss Universe, I will be able to do that in life. That is my greatest takeaway from Miss Universe. Okay, so Philippines have a huge amount of fans. Yes. I want you to give us a little bit of a message to the fans here and at home. But send a message. What would you say to all the fans in the Philippines? To all my fans from the Philippines and from all over the world, maraming salamat po. Thank you so much for loving me and for believing in me. It means a lot to somebody who is so naive in this industry, who has no idea how to become a beauty queen on the first day of my journey. But because of your love and support, I was able to be the woman that I am today. And regardless of the result, I may or I may not win the crown, but one thing is for sure, I'm going to make you all proud. You know, when I was a young girl, I used to watch Miss Universe on the television, and I thought, it's so far, it's so big, I can never get there. But to actually be here right now, knowing that in just a couple of days I'll be on that stage, <laughs> I'm just so incredibly happy. And to be representing for my home country, Thailand, I'm just, I'm in awe, I'm in shock, and it's the best feeling in the world. I'm so blessed to be here. And I cannot wait to be on that stage and really perform and make my country proud. Well, first of all, congratulations. How does it feel to be here? Thank you. It feels amazing. I cannot believe that I'm here. You know, with the COVID situation, I'm so glad that we're all here and that there's so many girls that are able to be a part of this competition. And what it makes me realize is that the world isn't that big. When you see all the girls in the auditorium together from different countries and everyone is so nice and so lovely, they're so warm. And I can't wait to get to know everyone. And also it's, it's so unique to see that everyone was born into such different cultures, different uh, languages, but we're all here together to tell our stories. And tell me about your journey, your road to getting here. You know? Just your, I know you obviously was Thailand, but the physical journey to get here. Did you just hop on a plane and get here and it was that easy or no? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> well, Thailand is very far away. That's one thing. And I really had to, it, was, um, it wasn't a struggle to get the visa, but it was a, a long process. And when I got the visa, I was very excited. But the journey here, the physical journey, if you can believe it, it's, it was more than 30 hours all the way from Thailand, yes. So I had to make a stop at Istanbul, and the layover was eight hours there. Oh my goodness, but it was so amazing. I'm so uh, blessed that some of my teams were able to come with me as well, my national directors. So they were there to keep me company, making sure that I'm okay, and you know, giving all the support. And in a world of COVID where you can't have family and friends, you know, come with you potentially, yes. how important is that support here on the ground? How important is it to know that, you know, people at home are behind you? Oh my, it's, it's absolutely everything. Knowing that you've got that support, it is the motiv motivation that keeps me going every day. Every time I see a message online and they're saying that they're supporting Thailand. And you know, it's so nice to see the nation coming together to support their candidate, to support their representative. And it's just how a, con a country thrive because we cannot thrive alone. We have to move forward together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I believe, though, that there are some super fans that did make it here. Can you tell me about those super fans that are just out there? Oh, they are so amazing. Every time I come down, they would be screaming, Thailand, Thailand, Thailand. We came down here at 7.30 in the morning, and they're already there. I think they're camping out there. But they've been so supportive, and I actually know quite a few of them. Some of them are big YouTubers in Thailand and flew all the way here just for the competition. But you know, pageantry is so big in my home country and it's, it's almost like a national sport. So the whole country gets behind it. They're very supportive, you know, and they're just right behind you. 
and I just want to say thank you to them for being here. I know that not a lot of people were able to be here, but I want to say thank you because every time I walk down and I hear Thailand, it makes me smile. It puts a smile on my face. I mean, it makes me want to make my day better. I want to go better, and I want to go in with 100% to do whatever it takes. Wonderful. Uh, one last question, a oh, couple last questions. How, how has it been on the ground? How has you know, the week sort of been unfolding? What is your day-to-day -day like? Give your fans at home and yeah. give our viewers a sense of what it's like. What is it like here? It is incredible. It's an incredible journey to have been able to meet all of the girls. Because you know when you know of each other online and you've been messaging, you're on WhatsApp, there's a WhatsApp group, you've been talking, but then to actually come here and meet them in reality, it's just a whole different feeling. And it's just so nice to get to know them better and to know their stories because each of them are so inspiring and they're so empowering and they have different stories that make them the woman that they are today and I think it's just unique to get to know them. So tell me how does it feel to be here? It feels amazing because this is my dream since I was a kid you know when I was a kid I talked to myself when I saw the TV one day I want to be the first Miss Universe from Indonesia it was like five years old but then I say to myself it means because it means that uh, nobody is gonna be the winner of Miss Universe from Indonesia if I pray like that, right? Yeah. Because I was saying like the first, but then it turns out until right now nobody has become the Miss Universe from Indonesia. So I hope what I pray it becomes true to represent my country, to you know share everything what we have, the beautiful things in Indonesia, the culture, the people, and especially my cows that I've been working since 2017 to you know represent me as the next Miss Universe. So you may make history as the first Miss Universe. I hope so. <laughs> Tell me, what was it about that dream, that idea of being Miss Universe that so inspired you? What did, what did you love so much about it? Yes, to be honest, since I was a kid, it was thinking about only princess things, right? I'm not lying, I'm not naive, but since I grow up, it becomes more than just a crown. It becomes more than just someone who's famous. But you have a voice. You have a voice that it's really meaningful to everyone to inspire others, that you have a value that you can work on to inspire them to work together with you. Especially I have my cause that is Senyum Desa or Smiling Village, which is we are focusing to help those people in remote areas because they are living in different quality with us, right? Especially Indonesia is a developing country. We have inequality almost everywhere in education, economy, healthcare system, security even. So that is what we are working on. So this is the cause that I bring here to Miss Universe and I hope that we can work together with Miss Universe organization, which we have already HIV awareness, we have Smile Train to work together to collapse with mine so it can become more bigger, not only in my country to inspire those people, but also the universe that we need to help those people who are in need. Because we are not living for ourselves. That's what I believe that living by giving is the best thing for your life. Because that's when you can see the true meaning of giving love and happiness. How has your voice, your platform, your work, how has it made a difference in Indonesia? Yes, so it was started in 2017 when I was just a student. <laughs> Together with my friend, we started to do the charity. But when we think it's not only gonna be like this, you know, because we want more and more. So we need to make it formal, legally. So we made it as organization in Indonesia and after I won the competition, from only 20 people or 30 people, it becomes 800 people around Indonesia. So we open national recruitment, and every time we visit to the charity, we open the libraries, we give them the seminar, we give them free healthcare checks, 
also together with the medicine, we teach them how to be independent, empowered as a woman. Because you know, in Indonesia especially, women get the glassling that they cannot work, especially in remote areas. Once you can read or you can write, it means that you are smart enough for you to get married or for you to work, but not for a good proper job. And that is what I'm really working on together with my friends. And yeah, since then, we've been having like 20 coordinators around Indonesia. We're always trying to improve. We even have our own kindergarten for free for the kids. And it's very happy, you know, to see those people and those faces very happy to see that we care. Sometimes they don't just asking for, I'm asking for your money to help me. No, they just need our sh love. They need our care, that we want to help them, that we are brother and sister, and we are available for every time. How hard has it been to change some of those cultural sort of values, I suppose, or you know, uh, social conventions around yes. women, you know, being enough, educated enough to get married. How yes. hard has it been to break through that? It's change? so hard. It's really tough. But you know, we are living, sharing by example. That's why I said to them. So that's why I always give them a motivation, sharing moment. You know, they got inspired. That woman can become someone. I told to him, I talked to them that we have our first woman president in our country, where we are still a developing country, but we have women as a president compared to around country in the world, right? So I talked to them that we can do things as long as we believe. I gave them the example because I was born not in, you know, in a royal family that is rich but I grew up making hard times to make my own career since 14 years old until I can stand in here. Because I was like, before I cannot get everything that I want to, now I can, and I just don't want to leave it by myself. I want to share it to them. So in the fact that, yes, it happens. Girls like really working hard to go to college from what I really teach them is like so, meaningful you know that they got inspired from it so i hope this one share becomes another share and another so i hope it's going to be very work uh working on together with miss universe organization well i really <laughs> admire the work that you're doing it's absolutely wonderful and it sounds like Thank a you. lot of hard work yeah. but miss universe and what you do is also a lot of fun <laughs> yes tell me about some of the fun moments that you really love about this job um, the fun moment, you know, I met amazing people more and more every day. I learned things that I never know. I even learned how to do my own hair. <laughs> how to do my makeup that is more correctly and perfectly. My nails too. Like, come on, right? So I'm become more independent right now. I'm become more cheerful. Like, I always talk to people. How about my uh, my life? So it's inspiring them also. So the fun thing is, everyone in Indonesia before was bullied me because they thought that I cannot speak, they thought that I cannot good in English. I was not good in English before. But I showed it to them that I want to learn every day, the whole my reign until right now so I can represent my country in a good way. Would you say that being involved in this universe and being Miss Indonesia has given you sort of much more confidence and the confidence to think that anything is possible? Great, yes, that's true. Because you know, People before don't trust me that I cannot speak in English. Now, here I am. <laughs> so nothing is impossible. That is also my hashtag that I always share since 2017. My first page in Indonesia for Go to Miss Universe when I was 19 years old. So this is my second. So that uh, from that, my hashtag is nothing worth having comes easy. I always post it every time I post a photo. So it's to share to everyone that what you see in Instagram is something that is only beautiful things. You don't see how they work hard for that. You don't see how they are trying to get that point. So you just have to work on to get that point for yourself, for your future.
Well, your English is beautiful, and I learned Thank Indonesian you. when I was in high school. <laughs> your English is much better than my Indonesian. Ah, uh, thank salamat, you. And that's about it. Ah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, um, tell me about, like now, here and now, where this is Miss Universe, this week, you are competing for that. How does that feel? It feels like a dream come true, for real. Because this is every woman's dreams in the world, you know, to represent their country, to meet all the beautiful ladies, to share their cows, because they are not only a woman that is beautiful and pretty, tall, but they have the confidence, they have the cows to fight for and to work together with the world.